is our July read on retail sales. Headline number expected to be up a small amount, up one-tenth, is up zero. Goose egg, unchanged from last month, which at least up to this point remains unrevised, and it was strong at up 1%. Happens to have been the strongest since January when it was up 27 So we are definitely seeing a little bit of a slowdown, or at least an averaging with the pace that we had last month. Revision, eight-tenths. One percent last month now becomes eight-tenths. If you strip out autos, the number moves up to four tenths, much stronger than expected. And it does show that autos were a bit of a drag on the headline number. And if we strip out X autos and gas sales, it continues to rise to up seven tenths. Now, the controller, the core number for retail sales inputted higher up the economic food chain, up eight tenths. That's a strong number. We're expecting a number around up six tenths. Uh, in the rear view mirror, eight tenths revised to up seven tenths. So this series has been running pretty strong, despite the weakness in headline on this particular month. Maybe the big news is how much yields are up. We're up about 11 basis points in a two-year. We're up 10 basis points in a 10-year. Yes, I heard you. Why? Look towards Europe. You know, our future. Look towards Europe. Look towards the U.K. You want to know what the U.S. is going to be like with our ongoing policy of energy? Just look towards Europe. They have now in the U.K. our double-digit inflation, 10.1% actually on year over year, first time in 40 years. And their curve inverted for the first time since 08. And their tenure is up 17 basis points. And if you look at Boone's, they're up a dozen basis points. And the two-year shots in Europe is up 16 basis points. So an energy awakening, and it isn't even cold weather yet. That's where the big awakening is. We need to pay close attention to these dynamics in Europe. Andrew, back to you. Hey, Rick, thank you for that. I uh, want to uh, send it over to Steve Leisman right now, who joins us now uh, with his analysis of these numbers. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, I, I disagree with uh, Rick's idea that uh, the U.K. is pointing to the future of the U.S. Sure, it's, it's possible. It's, it's worrisome. It's worth paying attention to. But I think they have a bunch of things going on over there. They're a lot closer to what's happening in Ukraine, a lot more affected than we are right here. Our energy production has been on the upswing. We are reasonably uh, self-sufficient when it comes to energy. We're probably going to get a hit to natural gas prices, depending upon what happens to natural gas supplies and stocks in Europe as a result of Russia reducing the supply there. So that's going to be a hit. But our current is appreciating. We have a central bank that's been a lot more aggressive than any of the European or UK central bank has been. So hopefully that's stuff that will mean that we can have a different outcome than the one. I think I think Rick is right to worry about it. I'm just not sure it's definitely going to happen. Rick, you want you you want to reply to that? No, no. I pretty much have my say. That is our future in Europe. The Inflation Reduction Act has a couple of decent pieces in it. But it certainly doesn't, in my opinion, hammer home the notion that we're continuing, we're continuing to think that the handoff to electric and some of the issues regarding curtailing fossil fuels is on some type of path that's sustainable. I, I don't think it is. So I will stick to my notion that we better pay very close attention to what's going on with natural gas and energy in Europe.